What's up, folks? Uh, like I've said uh, in the past, it, this is the just a great time to be making holsters. The number of companies who are providing resources and components and materials for us DIYers is uh, fantastic. And uh, as a result of this recent uh, upsurge in availability of uh, certain things, I've asked three companies to uh, send over to us a uh, sample pack of what they offer in terms of injection molded components for your holster. Nowadays, there's no reason to be making things like belt loops by hand. Um, we have, in our experience, have seen them uh, crack over a period of time due to hard use, especially like uh, if you're not conscious of where the grain is on the belt loop, it'll just snap across the uh, grain after about a year. It's not a question of when a Kydex loop of, of if a Kydex loop will break, it's a question of when. And you know, when you give it to your customer, you start the uh, the clock to when you're going to need to warranty it. And I've you know spoken to some other people in the industry, you know, a while back before we had these loops available to us. And you know, we've had discussions about how you know the the, the price of the holster may have to sort of like include whether or not you may want to warranty that loop later. And on top of it, uh, there are issues of just the amount of time it takes you to do it, like. You know, you can uh, review the videos that we've done and look at, you know, building a jig for making your belt loops and then making all your belt loops. And it's a matter of adding, you know, up to four or five minutes a pair between heating and drilling and finishing all your loops. That's, you know, if you're charging 60 bucks for a holster, uh, if not more, then you run into an issue where those minutes, those five, those four, five, ten minutes wind up costing you more money than purchasing a $2 or less belt loop, depending on the volume that you're doing it. And then finally, the number of people who are switching over to this injection molded component is so significant that it becomes an issue upon which uh, whether or not your holster can compete. So why would they buy it from you if you're making the loops out of Kydex as opposed to somebody else who's making a similar product and using a higher quality component? So that being said, we really encourage people who are making these holsters not only for uh, the durability of their product, the appearance of their product, but for your own wallet, get involved in some injection molded loops. What we're going to do now is just go through briefly and take a look at um, the offerings from holsterloops.com, index fasteners, and DIY holster. So uh, without further ado, let us uh, start taking a look at uh, some of these options. So this is the uh, sample pack sent to us from holsterloops.com. Uh, let me preface this by saying that for each of the uh, uh, companies we show, you should probably refer to their website for a complete selection of uh, colors, loops, uh, and prices since the prices scale, as well as country of origin if that is a consideration that is on your list. Um, Holsterloops.com sent us um, a pair of inch and a half OWB loops and inch and, a ha uh, inch and three quarters OWB loops and a sample of their uh, IWB strut and a sample of uh, one of their pull the dot loops. Um, they offer these in the uh, open configuration as opposed to the closed where the ends uh, fold in. For my money, I kind of prefer the uh, closed in ones or at least one face closed in such that you can configure the holster to ride slightly lower uh, depending on the customer's uh, anatomy or other considerations. You know, uh, there are some folks who have a, um, either something like a love handle or like a, a body armor where they might want this to ride just one eyelet uh, uh, lower, uh, allowing them to have a little more clearance between their body or their uh, uh, equipment and the holster. However, these are a, a very popular configuration and uh, I don't see anything uh, uh, wrong with them <coughs> per se. These are the uh, IWB struts. They come with a, an offset uh, based around the uh, popular configuration of the sort of single uh, loop uh, tuckable IWB holster which is a, a very popular seller for us. They come with the holes already in them. You can, as seen here, cut them, trim them, and polish them to a two-hole configuration. They also have uh, a shroud on the back to prevent the uh, interference of the hardware on the back between this hardware and the uh, holster or the gun. The IWB loops that they offer are very beefy and substantial and like all loops, are adjustable to fit uh, different width belts. 
these guys are pretty thick. They're actually a little thicker than the ones that uh, uh, we include on our holsters, but uh, I don't see that being uh, a problem either. They also have three points of adjustment for holster ride height, uh, which is something that I do like to see. At the end of the video, we're, since each of these companies offers a strut uh, as part of their uh, lineup, we're going to do a little comparison about uh, the uh, varieties of strut that we see here. Here you guys can see a, a selection of uh, available hardware from indexfasteners.com. Uh, uh, their retail site is ifithermoplastics.com. Uh, and like I said before, review them for a full uh, uh, selection of offerings and prices and whatnot, depending on uh, volume and all those other things. So here are their, uh, the OWB loops that they uh, sent to us. I know some of these were uh, designed uh, and developed in conjunction with uh, Off The Grid Concepts, another uh, holster maker. Um, these uh, all it feature a uh, intelligent uh, sort of uh, trapezoidal design that allows for a low profile while uh, allowing the belt to sort of clearance any kind of uh, taller geography of the holster, especially if you're using a light bearing, uh, making a light bearing holster rather. This allows you to set the loops a little bit more inboard and the belt can feed, a stiff belt can more easily feed up and around the contours of the back of the holster if you're doing like a uh, conventional 50-50 mold. Uh, these all come pre-drilled, which is, uh, it saves you time, but it also kind of um, forces you to use uh, their hole dimensions, which may or may not be uh, something you're into. However, they're all set up relatively closely to each other, so you don't have to make any major modifications to your holster design. You know, typically speaking, you're always going to have two holes, two uh, eyelet holes, which are about this distance apart. These are interestingly uh, oblong here, which allows you a little bit more variation. Um, which I think is a uh, very good idea. <coughs> uh, I think these are all very cleverly designed and uh, likely very durable uh, OWB loop uh, solutions. The one thing uh, about a couple of these, these, uh, these ones here, they tend to have a slightly sharper edge on them from the mold, but I don't think that's going to cause any undue wear and tear. Uh, these ones are uh, a little bit more rounded and uh, if you have some potentially, not that I would really care about this, uh, if you have some minor concern about, you know, uh, uh, feeding the belt through or uh, sort of uh, wearing on the nylon a little bit, that's something to take into consideration, but obviously I'm sure they're more than happy to send you a sample and you can evaluate it for yourself and uh, I don't think you'll care about it because I don't think it's that big of a deal personally. Um, they also have this selection of IWB clips which do not come drilled which I think is uh, uh, a benefit which allows you a little bit more freedom in the design of your holster. These have a very very aggressive uh, clip to them. Uh, you can drill, cut, trim, sand and reshape these uh, to whatever configuration you want. You can also apply a little bit of heat to these and give them uh, a curve or an offset or an angle uh, depending on the holster that you're building with these. And also they offer these little guys uh, developed by our friend uh, Tony over at Multi Holsters. I believe these now come in uh, inch and a half and inch and three quarters configuration. These are an IWB clip. They've got a great little angle uh, you drill them out at the top here and you can put them uh, on your holsters, your magazine carriers, you can, uh, I've seen some folks uh, put these on the back of like a magazine carrier and use it as sort of like an OWB clip uh, for something smaller like that. Uh, and uh, I think you're supposed to use these in conjunction with a little rubber grommet here to uh, relieve some of the stress and sort of help them snap back a little bit more onto your holsters. I know that Tony over at Multi Holsters has had a lot of success with these and I really appreciate them uh, putting these out on the market. They also offer an IWB strut, <coughs> which has uh, some similar features to the uh, other ones that we're going to be looking at at the end of the video. 
So this is the sample pack that uh, DIYholster.com sent over to us. For outside the waistband loops, they come in black or coyote with or without holes pre-drilled in them, ranging from inch and a quarter, 1.25, like a dress belt size, all the way up to two inches. And like I said, they're available in two colors with or without holes. Um, they are not trapezoidal. However, they are uh, very tall and uh, we find that they allow for uh, very good belt clearance uh, overall. They also offer pancake wings undrilled uh, in black and coyote in inch and a half and inch and three quarters for your uh, customers who maybe want a snugger fit or an easier time with their belts, et cetera, et cetera. And they also offer uh, IWB clips in black and coyote in inch and a half and inch and three quarters. Uh, they are uh, reasonably uh, substantial. They've got a nice underhook, and uh, one thing that I like about all of these is that they have uh, uh, particularly smooth edges. <clears throat> In addition to offering uh, um, these components, they also offer you know hardware and screws and stuff, and they also offer the full line of um, Raven concealment. Uh, OWB and IWB uh, components, from the strut to the OWB loops to the pancake wings. Um, there's a wide variety of loops here, um, ranging in different heights to different levels of taper. So for example, if you're using a particularly tall uh, or, or a particularly large uh, weapon-mounted light, you might want something that has this kind of height and this kind of uh, um, angle to it, or if you just want to reduce the profile of a smaller holster and not have to worry about belt clearance, you can use something that starts off at a mostly standard height with a small taper, and they also have just the regular flat across loops as well as the pancake loops and the uh, IWB strut, uh, which can be used as a uh, component on a pancake holster, or you can use a spacer and convert it to a uh, single mounting point for uh, a smaller uh, IWB uh, minimalist kind of holster. Now, <clears throat> obviously, uh, the Raven components cost uh, more. Um, however, um, given the features of a lot of these products, what you can see here are like um, well-rounded edges that are built into the mold, um, as well as the design that goes into them. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is these will all have the RCS logo on them. Uh, some people may have a problem with that, um, which I can understand if you don't want somebody else's uh, branding on your particular holster. Um, however, I kind of look at it two ways, considering that we use this uh, strut on our skeleton and access holster. Um, it, it, here's here's a, uh, a, a way to look at it. Um, two ways to look at it. One, these injection molded loops have been in service for many years at this point and have a very high rate of success. Um, that, that kind of track record is going to come with somebody else's logo for the time being. Additionally, um, I don't think that BMW really gets that worried if all their tires say Pirelli on them. You know, Pirelli has a good track record on making tires, and BMW has a good track record on making cars, and maybe they're happy to have each other's uh, logos on each other's products to a certain degree. Um, if that is not something that you're into, uh, of course, everybody else offers something that is um, unbranded and unlogoed. However, if you're looking for this particular functionality um, in this particular style with this particular track record, for the time being, it's going to come with somebody else's logo on it. However, um, I don't think that you will be uh, purchasing something that's dramatically inferior in any uh, noticeable way by uh, buying the unlogoed uh, components from any of these companies. It just so happens that these uh, components with this functionality come with a logo on them. Uh, take that for whatever it's worth. The final issue is that these all come uh, pre-drilled, or the ra rather not drilled, but the uh, holes are molded into the uh, loops. And so that uh, limits you to the uh, hole spacing uh, 
of the loops. Uh, I don't think with, uh, with you know, maybe small exceptions here and there, uh, you're going to run into any issues uh, with that. However, like we said in the past, I, you know, it's my preference is for an undrilled uh, component. So it gives me a little more freedom in the event that I run into a challenging custom project. Um, that being said, like I mentioned before, we will be uh, talking about uh, and comparing the struts between all three of these uh, offerings. So in this final portion of the video, we're going to discuss the uh, struts that all three of these uh, companies offer. They're all relatively similar, but there are some differences. And part of this video is going to, uh, part of this segment rather, is going to include uh, uh, bits and pieces of our opinion and our process. Um, so if we discuss things that we like or we don't like about any of them, that's uh, purely, uh, you know, our opinion based on the product that we make. Uh, and that in two bucks will get you on the bus. So take that for uh, whatever it's worth. Uh, here shown are the uh, RCS strut and spacer uh, available from DIY Holster, the strut available from Index Fasteners, and the strut available from HolsterLoops.com. Uh, now, they're all relatively similar. The, uh, what you can see is that this one uh, from RCS is a little flatter. It's actually substantially flatter. And these two have a, a height offset uh, which is designed around the production of uh, this kind of uh, single loop uh, holster. Uh, this was originated as an option to make um, uh, pancake holsters with a tuckable soft loop and then the spacer was created in order to adapt it to other applications. These two are strictly, uh, in my opinion, for the um, IWB uh, single loop uh, application, considering that this height offset may uh, be a little uh, excessive for uh, a tuckable soft loop on a pancake style holster. Um, so that being said, uh, all three of these feature Really, dog? All three of these feature uh, some protection for the, uh, the screws and hardware as they pass through the back, um, as well as multiple points of adjustment. Uh, the uh, index one also has recessed uh, um, uh, holes such that the hardware can sit even uh, deeper in there. Um, this, as far as I know, is only available in a two-hole configuration, which means that all of the height adjustment occurs at the top of the strut. The RCS and the Index 1 both have uh, nubs around these holes to prevent the rotation of the soft loop once all the hardware is tightened down. The uh, HolsterLoops.com one does not. Um, I don't think that's the biggest problem in the world, however, I prefer to have it. And that being said, I prefer to have as many as possible. Um, additionally, one issue is that we really like to rivet the eyelets uh, on these struts. For one, I think it uh, prevents, uh, over a period of time, the holes from deforming when they come in contact with the metal hardware and sort of as things get loose and they, you know, uh, rub around or, or uh, can sort of uh, potentially deform since the metal's so much harder than the plastic. And secondly, I really like the way the oval-headed screws sit into the eyelet. I think it gives it a really clean look, a very clean professional look. The advantage of this strut being more flat is that these are easier to uh, rivet. As you can see here, this is just a regular uh, eyelet setting die um, that a lot of people are going to have. And on, as you can see on the index one, you can't get it to align uh, I don't know, you can't quite get it to align with the hole if you want the finished face of the eyelet on the outside of the strut. And uh, the same goes for the uh, holster loops one. So you are, are uh, kind of forced to forego eyelets on these struts. Whether or not that's important to you, um, that's up to you to decide. It depends on your application and your choice of hardware. Also, it gives you uh, certain problems if you choose to rivet these on as opposed to screw them on. That means that uh, this top hole cannot be riveted 
on any of those uh, circumstances. Um, the other issue is <coughs> that um, the, the spacer works very well for this kind of application. It also gives us the option to say we want to do something more custom like this. We can keep the profile small as opposed to, say, for example, if we were to use one of these, it would be a little too tall in relationship to the project that we're working on. So having the option of it being either tall or, or shallow, I think is kind of nice, especially if you get uh, some custom stuff coming into your shop and you want uh, a certain amount of, uh, of flexibility from the components you're using. And finally, this is the pickiest, pickiest thing we could possibly discuss, but it's important to us. Um, we have here uh, just a shell. This is a, a, a no-go shell for, for a couple of reasons. This, is, this is, would have eventually been a filster access. And I want to talk about something important. And that's uh, something that we call either draping or draft. And that's how the Kydex settles down to the flat part of the holster. You know, the taper uh, or lack thereof uh, between the molded portion and the part that you want to keep flat for whatever reason. Um, we go to a lot of effort to control that draft on our Glock holsters uh, as a result of them being particularly square um, and particularly tall in these dimensions. For example, um, on like a shield or an MMP, it's a lot easier to control as a result of the contours of the gun. However, for this, we go to some great effort to ensure that this is clean and flat because something we want to do is keep this dimension here as small as possible because this part, depending on how you cut it, is going to be the part that, say, for example, on this intended application, is going to either poke or not poke the customer in the leg when they're carrying an appendix. So what we want to do is we want to keep that as narrow as possible. Um, now, for example, if we were to use, let's just grab the holsterloops.com one, right? For this to sit flat, we need to position it right about here. So we'll, we'll mark that out, right? So let's grab a straight edge, just for example. So on this, in order for us to have like a good clean spacing of the eyelet and so the edge isn't coming too close to the eyelet there, we're gonna kinda need to come there on that dimension. So we'll take the index fasteners one. For that to sit flat, we can fit that slightly more inboard, move that over a little bit, because this dimension doesn't taper the way the one on the um, holster loops one does. So we can kind of reduce that dimension a little bit more. With the spacer, we can set that very far inboard and put the strut on top of it so that the width of the strut doesn't interfere with the draft of the holster. And that's one of the very picky reasons that we prefer this configuration. I've heard some folks say, well, I don't want that spacer, that's just extra stuff. Um, that depends entirely on the amount of precision and consideration that you put into your own projects. If it doesn't matter to you, it doesn't matter to you. And then you wind up with this dimension not really mattering to you either. For us, that's extremely important, and that's part of um, something that we strive for and we pay a lot of attention to when we're building these holsters. So the, mo the amount that we can reduce that directly uh, affects the customer's overall comfort with their holster, their perception of quality, and uh, their potential to carry it more frequently. So if I can keep this located as far inboard as possible. Not only does that reduce this dimension that has the thigh poking potential, but it also allows me to move the top of the strut more inboard and out of the way of the firing grip, which is another consideration. So that's one of the reasons that while, yes, it's an extra piece, um, we do, on our end, prefer the spacer with the strut. Now. Like I said, it all depends on your application and uh, the amount of uh, precision you're getting out of your holsters. 
obviously the amount of draft, if this, if this wasn't as precise, this is going to force you out even further um, if you're not maximizing the precision and detail in this area of the holster here. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the small footprint of this uh, spacer does allow you to keep the profile a little bit smaller, which to us is a bonus, um, as well as the uh, ability to rivet uh, those holes, both for appearance and, in my opinion, uh, lo really long-term durability. So um, that's our overview on the struts and where we stand on that issue. Um, so <clears throat> I'd like to thank you for watching. Hopefully this video has given you a little bit of insight into what's available on the market. The reasons for using injection molded components are just so obvious and outweigh any benefit that you might perceive of making them yourself. Um, the consistency of the products is extremely high. The durability is a big improvement. The time savings add up to significant money savings. And on top of it, it improves the quality of your product. So get out there, spring for the injection molded components, and good luck with your projects.